March Madness is upon us. A couple of that with the NBA season is going on, actually going to the playoffs. A better way to bet on those games and games in other sports like the Premier League and everything else, or even Major League Soccer, than betus.com, where you can get 125% of the sign-up bonus, which is up to $2,500 by using the pro the promo code TKT for the clown times. So what is other perks here? You can bet on the go. You can bet anytime, anywhere on your mobile device. You get fast pass or you get paid immediately every single time. And last but not least, you can you like, like you could do live betting where you can bet during the game, getting the early and the best lines. Again, use my promo code TKT for the clown times to get up to 125% of the sign-up bonus, which is up to $2,500. So again, uh, not to sound like a book of record, but go to betus.com where the game begins. Drab, let's use that to shift it to the HBCU sports set. Uh -huh. Now, I think there were like four, were there four players from HBCUs that were drafted? You know what, Scott? I'm going to take this moment to correct okay. everyone. All right. It's five. Oh, five. Okay. It's five. <laughs> For whatever reason, People tend to forget about one Brian Cook. Yes, that Brian Cook out of the University of Cincinnati. He actually played his first two seasons oh. at Howard University. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's if we right. he's give, a transfer. Yes, he's a transfer from Howard. Now we're gonna give credit to to James Houston. I understand the situation is different because he transferred to an HBCU to finish out his career. Right. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and give credit. As a matter of fact, he played more games at Howard than he played at Cincinnati. He played 21 at Howard, 11 mm -hmm. at Cincinnati. So, oh, okay. yes, I'm it's most, season, definitely, yeah. I'm most right. definitely going to give him more credit. Well, I'm, I'm going to give him credit for being an HBCU player. It just mm -hmm. happens to be that he was one of the many that came under that whole Ron Prince fallout that led to that mass exodus, which included one, um, uh, 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 Newton, and, of course, Jacquez Ezzard, who I will talk about a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. So yes, there were five. And of mm -hmm. course, like I said before, uh, that would be uh, Brian Cook going in the second round to the Kansas City Chiefs, and the second uh, followed by Joshua Williams out of uh, Fayetteville State. Yes. Going in the fourth round. The Kansas City, right? Also the Kansas City. Remember I yeah. said it, it took five? Mm -hmm. Two of those guys we spent times in the HBCU. Nice. Then later on in the fourth round, you had uh, the Kobe Durant, the defensive back out of South Carolina State, go to the LA Rams. In the sixth round, you had James Houston. Shout out to uh, Brad Holmes, the uh, general manager up there in Detroit. The, of course, the out of North Carolina a t played some football there too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he drafted uh, James Houston out of Jackson State in the sixth round. And then in the seventh round, uh, ja Tyree Carter out of Southern was taken by the Chicago Bears at pick number 226. <clears throat> so you had, uh, let me repeat it one more time for the people out there because I kept seeing people <laughs> post four. No, it's five. Five, five, five. Five I'm dollar to, foot long. Yes, Sorry, right? Sorry. So I'm going to include <laughs> Brian Cook in that situation if a lot of you guys don't. So to hell with you. I'm taking five. And a and, and, and matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and take this time. I'm going to salute one Flea Harrell, Gary Flea Harrell, the, the offensive assistant down there, the, the running backs coach down there at Jackson State, who was the head coach over at, at Howard University, who was responsible for recruiting Brian Cook to come over to Howard, okay. along with another gentleman that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So, yes, we talked about the five uh, HBCU athletes that were drafted um, in this year's um, – a, a draft, but of course you had several players that were picked up as undrafted free agents and guys right. that, that are going to participate in mini camps. Um, names that stand out, of course, Marquez Bell out of uh, Florida a and that's going to be there in Dallas. Um, yeah. the, uh, the trigger man, Felix Harper, quarterback from Alcorn State that's going to uh, to Cleveland. Okay. Um, another one of those transfers, Quinterio Cole was safety who um, spent his last year or so in Louisville, transferred from Alcorn State. So shout out to, uh, to, 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 to Fred McNair, the head coach over there, 
that was re- uh, capable of recruiting both Harper and Cole to come over um, to Alcorn State and, and, of course, end up in the NFL that way. Right. Um, and then, of course, John May Martin out of North Carolina a and he's going to the Colts on a mini camp deal. Um, Akil Glass, the quarterback yeah. out of Alabama a and the big yeah. arm, he's actually going to Tampa Bay. And then, a, oh, and, and then, Learn like I the said goat. before, yes, he's going to um, be with the GOAT down there with Tom Brady. And then the name that stood out to me the most, Braylon Robinson out of Alcorn State who they're looking to play at wide receiver. Note, I didn't say he played wide receiver at Alcorn. They're looking to have him play wide out at Tampa. So he was a quarterback. He's a sprinter. Oh, he was a football. Oh, he was a track guy. He's a track guy. Interesting. Okay. You know, uh, ran the fastest time in the 60 and the 100 down there at Alcorn State. Um, wow. Competed for a national title in, in the 100. So, yes, he's a um, huge sprinter, and, and he's going to go ahead and, and – and, go into Tampa and be a mini camp tryout there and see if we can go ahead and get him a roster spot. How did they um, find him? I know that they had to do some work to my, to, to mining to find yeah, him. To just his speed. They they just took a chance on his speed. They, they saw how fast he is and took a chance. Now, this isn't the first time. God, I can't remember what his name is. Willie Galt? Uh, no, not Willie Galt. Um, Ronaldo Wienheimer? Ronaldo no. Nehemiah? No, Quentin Bell. Quentin, Quentin Bell. Bell was a um, defensive end. Actually, he was a wide receiver turned defensive end. Okay. Oh, my God. Where did Quentin play um, in the swack? I want to – God, I can't remember what Quentin played. It, it is killing me right now. But, <laughs> he, like I said, he, he was converted over from wide out to mm-hmm. defensive end. And final season, played defensive end just one year, led the swack in sacks because of his speed. Nice. And the, and of course the Raiders took a chance on him because of course he was a speedster playing on the edge where he would eventually end up where at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So yeah, the Bucks have been known to go ahead and and take chances on guys who are speedsters to see if they can go ahead and play in other positions. So yes, again, shout out to to, to Braylon and his attempt to go ahead and make the league um, as a wide receiver. And then the final guy I wanted to talk about was my man Jacquez Ezzard. I talked, I brought him up before. Okay. He's coming hit DC to play for the commanders. In essence, he's kind of returning home. Yes, mm-hmm. a lot of people out there who are big fans of FCS football know Jacquez from his time playing with um Sam Houston State the past two seasons where he won a national championship in the spring of 2020. Right. But he started at Howard University, another mm-hmm. player that was recruited by Gary Flea Harrell, that unfortunately was part of that breakup there at Howard again by that Bama Ron Prince. And um, <laughs> yeah, that, that huge mess that was going on there. So yeah, oh, I, I, I still feel bad for that 2019 team and what they could have been. I truly believe that they could have competed against North Carolina a t for the MEAC championship that season. But it's mm. a season that we'll never know and, and never see because of one, um, God, what's your boy's name that's now down at um, William & Mary, the head coach down there now, uh, uh, that used to be the head coach at Virginia? Oh, London. London. Mike London, yes. Mike London. So, yeah, yeah when well, Mike London left, and, and and like the roots, all things uh, things fall apart. Fall apart, and, yeah. And, yeah, that entire team broke up, man, and, and we never got an opportunity to see that team become what I thought that they would be. Right. So, final thing, final big news coming out of the MEAC. Um, it was first reported um, by collegead.com. Um, even though the athletic directors there within the MEAC voted to approve the, um, of, of, of the addition of Chicago State to the conference, with Howard University looking to, to move out to go to the CAA, it was voted today. That, that, that vote was voted down by the university presidents. Hmm. So... Um, it's interesting because the ADs in the, in the MEAC voted seven to one in favor of the addition with the, the, the college presidents voting two to six in op- opposition of this addition. What? I mean, you want a line, like 
if, if anything, the sports have taught us the last few years. Mm-hmm. We've known this, but it's really been brought up to the fight with the happenings. Is that it says the it's the smartest, similarly the smartest people in sports. Mm-hmm. It seems to be chaotic in terms of dysfunctionality, in terms of how organizations are run. We see it in professional sports, we see it in collegiate sports, in particular, not only on campuses, but leagues. You have ADs who are closer to who is in charge of. Guess what? Athletics that voted to accept Chicago State to keep the numbers up in the MIAC, but you have the nerds, aka the presidents, for some reason voting that shit down. Now I don't know why they would do that. I don't know why they would usurp the people they've hired, the whole fair people that they hired to do to make such decisions. Why have to? Why have a vote if you're going to overrule them? That's what I mean, and it's not just I'm not picking on HBCU conferences. You could, you could. This, this goes to the Big Twelve. We see this having the Big Twelve, i.e., Texas and Oklahoma, especially Texas. I'm looking at you, Longhorn fam. Um, we've seen this in the past, the ACC, where Maryland got tired of uh, John Swaffer shit, decided to vote for the cash in the Big Ten. Um, you know, we've seen this before. You've seen this, we mentioned pro sports. You've seen this before. But damn, I, I focus on this because well, one thing is the HBU sports segment, too. It's like you got a conference as great as the MEAC. Just shooting themselves in the foot left and right. You're losing members. And you think they'll replenish, but they're, I don't know what the fuck's going on. 